I was hoping that you could expound on um, degenerative disc diseases, hip dysplasia, and osteoarthritis. Next question, please. <laughs> there, there is several ways to look at this. Now, I had, had a conversation with somebody walking over here. Oh, I was actually in the men's room talking about degener degenerative disc disease or bone uh, coming out of an accident years ago, and uh, I was sparring back and forth. So uh, I don't teach that all disease has a spiritual issue. And people misunderstand that. I say 80% do. There are things that happen because of accidents or things that happen in life and so on. So. Um, but in this case that you're asking me, I'm going to take the position of a spiritual issue and from years of experience. <clears throat> Your body is a responder to how you think. And, uh, but your body isn't just responding because it's thinking. Your body really doesn't think at all. It really is being manipulated by things that do think. You know, one time Jesus, before he laid hands on someone to heal them, he first cast out a spirit of infirmity that was causing the disorder. Spirit of infirmity. Sometimes Jesus would cast out the spirit of insanity. He cast out the spirit of epilepsy. I remember um, a few years ago, we were doing a conference in uh, Houston, and there was a couple brought their nine-year-old daughter to us that they were trying to train her to be an Olympic gold medalist in her journey in skating. But she was having seizures. Well, you can't go on to be a figure skater and win medals as you grow up and have seizures. So I'd had some experience with epilepsy as an evil spirit because Jesus dealt with epilepsy as an evil spirit. But not all epilepsy is because of evil spirits. So after a while, we start to understand that a lot of things in our journey of growing up in this thing but I know what Jesus did, he cast out the spirit, and the spirit no longer threw the kid down or convulsions or into the fire or whatever. And this conference was pretty busy, and this couple brought the daughter to me, and I told my wife, I said, uh, you handle this. She said, me? I said, yeah, he'll work with you. And you just went for it. You, I for do you want to talk, come, come talk about it. It's your story. What am I telling your story for? What happened to this? Tell the story. Well, actually, during that time, we were kind of broke up in different groups. And I came to you and said, there's a girl here who has epilepsy. And I, and I told you all the story you just said. And sweet girl, sweet girl. And I just really had a burden for her because I wanted to see her free. She, she, she had dreams and she wanted to do things. And so I said, I really wanted him to come pray with her. I said, will you come please do this because I really want to see her free. And I, I, know, I know she will be if you go. And he said, no. I said, no. And he said, you, you do it. Me. Now, I have to remember, you know the story. I was raising kids on the little blanket at the conferences. I was just kind of overseeing some stuff, but I didn't expect for me to do this. I wasn't doing it back then. And he said, he'll work with you. He said, he'll work with you. The Father will work with you by his spirit. I said, I looked at him, and I went, well, he's got faith that I can do it, and he says I can do it, so I'm just going to go do it. So I did. I just went and, and dealt with it, and I cast the spirit of epilepsy out of her and, and commanded her to be free in the name of Jesus. And that's all I did. That's it. And I just believed. This young lady never had another seizure ever again. And she was a junior silver medalist in the Olympics. And... Uh, well, I have in our archives, and she's been to our place. And well, I think it was about, I want to say five years ago, maybe, because this was quite a while ago. And I, we were head church, and I think 
I don't, I think she might've came to the form of my life. I can't remember. But anyway, I was up on the platform talking with some people and then I felt this little tapping on my shoulder. And we had seen them when she was younger quite a bit because her family would come to a lot of conferences and stuff. But I hadn't seen her in years and years and years. So I felt this little tapping on my shoulder and I looked up and I, and I looked at this girl and she says, do you remember me? Now, she's not a girl anymore. She's a young woman, okay? And I looked at her eyes. And I thought, she is so familiar. What is it about her? She goes, it's me. And then she told me her name. And I went, oh, my gosh. Threw my arms around her. Here she's married, got kids and stuff now. But she says, I have never forgotten, ever, will ever forget that day. And I said, me either, sweetie. And so, I mean, just just blessed my heart. And God worked with me. And I, I wasn't sure because I, I never did it before. So he can work with you. I have, uh, in my archives, I, the family sent me pictures from newspapers of her skating and then standing there with a the medal around her. And they would send stuff like this to me as proof. And, and um, so that was quite an interesting thing. The reason I went there is because we're talking about evil spirits again, which is a very uncomfortable conversation for most people. They, Except believers. Believers are never intimidated by evil spirits. Only Christians. I did. Um, evil spirits can be behind many of our infirmities. When you have body parts that begin to disintegrate, which is your question. Um, usually what I have found, especially like an osteoarthritis or um, spondylosis or degenerative disc disease uh, and some of the loss of calcium and, the, and so on, um, I have found self versus self conflict. One of the biggest things that I have found in humans, including Christians, is that they don't like themselves. They don't have a value system for their own identity. They're always comparing themselves to somebody else. Or they grew up in an atmosphere where they weren't affirmed by a parent. 90 to 95% let me see, let's look in this room. I'd never been wrong one time in th over 30 years, anywhere in the world. This is the beginning of the problem. I'm going to ask a question. When I ask the question, those in the room, I want you to raise your hand high. I'm going to raise my hand high because I'm part of the profile. And when I ask you to raise your hand, don't give me any little duck flaps. Give me high fives. And I want you to look around at the hands up, and you thought you were the only person that was suffering from this void. And you're going to find in this room, as small as it is, at least 90% of every one of you will raise your hand if what I have observed happens today. Actually, what you see could be the beginning of your own healing. Because the enemy wants you to think, you're the only one that wasn't affirmed. So here comes the question. You ready for it? How many of you growing up as children do not remember hearing your earthly father say these words to you? I love you. Look around. Look around. We got about 85, 90%. Thank you. I learned something else. And, and I said, I've traveled extensively in my time, worldwide, different cultures, it's all the same. Things that are common to man are things that are common to man. I've come to an incredible, incredible observation that at least 90% of all of Christianity, worldwide, historically, and even to the day that I speak, is made up of men and women and children who never heard their earthly father say to them these words, I love you. 
the Father in heaven. He said he's a father to the fatherless. Do you remember reading that? God the Father has been searching out you kids, finding you, sending his spirit to deal with you, that you could be reconciled to a father that does love you. The reason I know that he loves you is because what you didn't hear from your earthly father, two, there are three times the voice of the father is recorded in scripture. Two of the three times the literal voice of the father is recorded is at a baptism of Jesus with John in the Mount of Transfiguration. This is what is heard about Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I'm a preacher's kid. I never heard it. Maybe if I'd heard it and I had that affirmation, I wouldn't have lost those 20 years as an adult in sin. I was 38 before I got saved. You don't need to know about my 20 years in sin. That's none of your business. But I promise you, like the rest of you perhaps, or others, it's always looking for love in the wrong places. True? Because of the void. You're created with the need to be affirmed. I help people really understand affirmation from Psalm 139. That before even your parents were conceived, God knew you. You're not an accident, you're not a mistake, you're a planned event. That's why this death angel is stalking America, killing our babies, is such a horrible death angel. Because it's taking away the Father's inheritance. We're losing many apostles and prophets and statesmen that don't even make it to first base. Who do we think we are? America doesn't understand the chastening that's headed its way until it repents. I don't want to interfere with God's inheritance, do you? So that's just a side thought. Back to your question. See, it's not the question that takes so long, it's the answer. Is when we have degenerative diseases, they usually are self versus self, rejection, accusation, conflict. And the body begins to break down. Also, sometimes envy and jealousy can be a factor. What's envy and jealousy? It's comparing ourselves to others. And what others have, we love, but we hate them because they have it and we don't. See, envy and jealousy hates the person but loves the thing that they are. In Proverbs 14, it says that envy is the rottenness of the bones. That's such things as osteoporosis. That's loss of calcium. That's degeneration. If you have your own identity, you're not really lusting after somebody else's identity, are you? But some people don't have an identity. They don't have an affirmation. When you became born again, even if you were struggling with an affirmation, you became a son and daughter of the living Father. Is there any greater thing to be known as than a son of God or a daughter of God? Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, but let me tell you about, tell me about what? The failure of your earthly father to affirm you? Why are you comparing him to him? You err. So we stumble over humans and sometimes avoid the acceptance of a living God. So when I find degeneration, especially degenerative disc disease, I also find addictions. When people have, especially the culture, the, the drug culture, is spawning incredible amount of people are going to be hopping around with canes and wheelchairs because their spines are going to begin to crumble. The, the discs are going to begin to dry up because that's one of the first things I've seen coming out of addictive personalities is structural problems. It's there all over the place. Then guess what you need? Painkillers. More drugs. 
more stuff. So there's a lot to think about, isn't there? If you want to avoid some of these diseases in which your body parts start to dry up or to become vulnerable or start loving yourself. I don't mean be stuck on yourself. Accept who you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. The hand of God is upon you. Believe it. Embrace it. Next question. <laughs> 